Now let's have a look at the details of each slide. In basic terms, S4 is a mixture of coarse and fine aggregates, the filler and bituminous bender. There are mainly four S4 types, dense graded, open graded, stone mastic, and fine graded, fine gap graded. The most common type of S4 is a dense graded mixture. This is the focus of our lecture. A dense graded S4 mix has a continuous uh, distribution of aggregate particle size and filler and a low design air volume content, generally in the range of three to 7%. The open graded S4 is characterized by a large uh, proportion of coarse aggregates and only small amounts of fine aggregate and filler. Due to large voids, its usage can lead to reduced noise and reduced surface water and spraying. The stone mastic asphalt is also a gap graded mix, but with a high proportion of coarse aggregate, providing an interlocking stone on stone skeleton that resists permanent uh, deformation. Generally, it has high durability and high rot resistance. Uh, it is primarily used for heavy traffic uh, roads, but it can be used for all types of pavements. A fun gap graded asphalt mix is a dense and low air walls mix, but with intermediate size fractions replaced by finer refractions. It is the durable mix for low traffic situations such as uh, residential streets and other light duty applications. The dense graded asphalt is most popular used in the field. It could be used for strengthening or correcting irregularities or even fixing an existing pavement. Constructing a new pavement, improving the surface properties and the working surface of the existing and new pavements so surely this dense graded asphalt has multiple applications and it is the main focus of our unit. The other mixed types like open graded, stone mastic and fine gap graded asphalt are mainly used for the pavement to meet any special requirement. Step two is to select component materials. The principal factors influencing the performance characteristics of asphalt mixes are the skeleton and quality of components and the volumetric properties of the mix, like normal size, uh, nominal size, the grading, the bender content, and void relationships. The selection for bender depends on the environmental conditions, such as temperature and traffic and property requirement of the asphalt. The bundles for asphalt manufacture mainly contain two groups, the conventional and modified bitumen, bitumen bundles. There are two types of modified bitumen bundles, the multi-grade bundle and polymer modified bundle. Now let's uh, look at the details of each type of the bundle. The most commonly used bituminous binders in Australia is the conventional uh, bitumen. According to its uh, viscosity at 60 degree, the conventional bitumen could be divided into three major grades, class 170, class 320, and class 600. By the way, uh, the vis viscosity of the bitumen is a measure of its resistance to deformation at a given rate. The softer grade, like class 170, is good at resisting fatigue and cracking due to its flexibility and dura durability. So it is typically used for light traffic and in cool climates. The harder grade, like class 600, is good at resisting rotting or deformation of the pavement. So it is generally useful for pavements with heavy duty 
the D medium uh, grade class 320 has good resistance to rotting while um, maintaining flexibility and durability. So it is the most versatile and commonly used type of binder. Now let's uh, look at the modified bitumen binder. Compared to standard bitumen grinds, the multi-grind bitumen is less susceptible to temperature change. So it can provide improved deformation resistance at high surface temperature while retaining the desired level of flexibility at the low temperature. The polymer modified binder is adding the polymer to increase binder toughness and elasticity. Toughness is the ability of a material to absorb energy and plastically deform without fracture. The polymer modified binders are normally used to enhance the properties of bituminous binders to improve performance on heavily trafficked uh, pavement surfaces or provide greater flexibility. Its good performance includes improved flexibility, the cohesion, and resistance to deformation of asphalt mix at high temperature. According to different application purpose and different climate in the area, we can choose different type of binder from class 170 to class 320 and either multi-grade binder or polymer modified binder. For example, if it is intended to be used for uh, residential uh, driveways and in moderate uh, climate, then we need to use uh, C70, C170 or C320 uh, as binder material. We already learned the selection of binder in step two. For step two, uh, we also need to select the aggregates the nominal size of the aggregate could be determined as a function of the layer thickness or the layer thickness could be selected on the basis of the nominal size required for a particular application. A guide to selection of layer thickness and nominal size is shown in the table here. For example, if the nominal size of the dense graded asphalt mix is 40 millimeter, then the layer thickness has to be greater than 100 uh, millimeter. Step three is to combine aggregates to meet target uh, grading. The target grading has to meet uh, the grading envelope requirements. In general, the grading envelope is the particle size distribution of the aggregate. This table is the percentage of passing each side is sieve size or different nominal size of the aggregate, the AC10 to AC40 on this table represent nominal size. And these values in the tables are the uh, percentage uh, passing sieve size in terms of mice. When we plot the data in log scale, we are the horizontal axis is the sieve size in log scale and the vertical axis uh, is the percentage of passing. Here is uh, how the grading envelope looks like. According to the previous table, for AC14, we could plot the upper bound and lower bound curve and normally the target grading uh, falls, uh, falls in between them. A target grading may also be chosen from empirical formula. Well, most engineers will work from standard grading curves, such as those given in previous table. It is possible to work from a design formula, such as that of Fuller and Thompson equation. So P equals uh, 100 uh, times uh, D uh, divided by capital D to the power of N. So in this formula, the capital P is the total percentage passing a given size. If we know the size of the uh, sieve D, uh, the maximum particle size capital D and 
the ex, uh, exponent uh, could be taken as the value in between 0.4 and 0.7 to stand for boundary values. Then the percentage for mass of aggregate passing a given C uh, capital P could be calculated. Uh, this equation produces the maximum uh, particle density when we take uh, this n as 0.5. In this unit, we have the opportunity to conduct lab testing on pale metal materials. If you have done the lab testing, then here is the uh, lab sheet uh, you need to fill in. You could use the Fuller and Thompson formula to calculate uh, the target uh, grading and then record the values for all three uh, samples uh, with bitumen content of uh, 4% to 6%. We will practice uh, one example uh, by the end of this lecture. We could also work out the proportion of combined uh, cost aggregate PC, uh, the proportion of combined fund aggregate PF, proportion of filler uh, P fuel, and bitumen content uh, capital B. We are aware that. PC is for cost aggregate with particle <coughs> sorry, size equal or greater than 4.75 uh, uh, millimeter. PF uh, is for fun aggregate with size less than uh, 4.75 millimeter, but equal or greater than 75 micrometer. And P fill is for filler size less than 75 micrometer. For example, for sample one, the bitumen could be calculated as the total mass, uh, 1,200 grams times 4%, and we get the value of 48 uh, 